All right. As I mentioned earlier, a ray of political sunshine over the weekend as Republican Glenn Youngkin was sworn in as governor of Virginia. A state, by the way, that Joe Biden won by 10 points just a year ago. Now, it's considered a bellwether uh, for midterm elections. You know, Democrats are very nervous after Glenn Youngkin won the state of Virginia. But what I found very encouraging is that uh, Governor Youngkin did not waste any time getting to work. He issued 11 executive orders on Saturday saying these are important steps that we're taking today to begin the work of restoring excellence in education, making our communities safer, opening Virginia for business, and making government work for the people and not the other way around. Here to break down all that uh, the governor did as it pertains to education, a big issue in the gubernatorial election, is FRC's Meg Kilgannon, Senior Fellow for Education Studies. Meg, welcome back to the program. Thanks so much, Tony. It's great to be here. All right. Just for the benefit of uh, some who may uh, be new to, to our listening audience, you know, remind them um, how Governor Youngkin pulled off this come from behind victory and how important the issue of education was in that victory. Well, education was the key issue in his victory. It is absolutely what made the difference for him as a candidate. Uh, he campaigned on um, the issue of parental rights and education uh, marginally from the beginning of his campaign. But what really turned it out is it, it turned it around as in terms of a game changing issue was when his opponent said that parents had no right to say to, to have any say in what goes on in school. And of course, um, that's ridiculous. And uh, Governor Yonkin was able to um, capitalize on that mistake because he sincerely believes that parents do have the right to, to well, have a say in what's going on in schools. So. I, I don't think that was a mistake. I, I, <laughs> I think that was actually how they view it. But sure. with that in mind, of his 11 initial executive orders, one of those speaks directly to that issue. Tell our listeners about it. Yes. Um, one goes directly at the issue of what of parents having a say in their children's education, and it involves masking of kids in schools. And um, this is going to be this is going to be a very, very contentious issue moving forward. Um, I'm very um, pleased to see him take it on, frankly. Um, it it it, me it means that, that parents are going to be able to decide if their children are masked at school rather than the schools making that policy, the superintendent of schools and the health department of each county and the state. Um, there have been all kinds of mandates um, sent down uh, over the, the state of Virginia from the state level health departments, the county level health departments, um, the, the individual school district um, health officers have made all kinds of pronouncements and rules and procedures during the pandemic. And it's, it's led to a, a, a hodgepodge of rather tyrannical um, dictates, none of which are uh, founded on science, <laughs> though they claim to be, um, or approved by voters. And so... Well, as you said, uh, there's conflict coming. We're not going to have to wait very long, but you've already had some school districts say they're going to keep their mandates in place. But what the governor has said in response is the parents have the right to make that decision as to whether or not their children will wear a mask. And if the school does not uh, adhere to the wishes of the parents, then the state is going to weigh in on behalf of the parents. Yes, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. We know in Florida, when Governor DeSantis did this, the uh, federal government came in and said, uh, we're going to cover the balance of what the state is going to refuse individual school districts when they have mask mandates. Uh, and that was a really contentious fight. Uh, we'll probably see similar uh, moves with this effort from Governor Yunkin, and it's something that we really need to have a, a conversation about. 
uh, and, and see exactly what's going to happen. Um, he also banned critical race theory in classrooms. He referred to it as divisive concepts in, and then comma, including critical race theory is the way that the executive order is written. And um, I certainly hope that we can agree that divisive concepts includes gender identity. And I'd love to see that banned from classrooms too. But uh, banning critical race theory is a great start. Well, I think um, it could certainly lead to that as he's called for an investigation into what has occurred in Loudoun County, which that policy was really at the center of the policies in Loudoun County. Very much so. He uh, had an additional executive order um, calling for an investigation of what happened in Loudoun County. The Loudoun County School Board has had launched its own investigation and it has not released the results of that investigation. Um, the, though, though the taxpayers paid for that investigation, it is for only apparently the use of the superintendent and the uh, school board members to know what those results were. So uh, the state now will come in and do its own investigation of what happened, and that will be those results will be made available to the public. That'll be a much more open process, and um, I don't think it's going to be fun for the people in Loudoun County to find out exactly what went on. Well, Meg, I, I find it uh, I interesting that as the governor in this executive order on divisive theories, uh, critical race theory the divisive concepts, rather, that uh, immediately you get those saying, well, you see, CRT is not being taught in the classrooms. But the the governor did not back down and goes, well, yeah, it's not being taught as CRT 101, uh, but that theory is underlying a lot of what our children are teaching. It's the lens through which uh, so many subjects are being taught. And, and good for him that he's not, you know, not allowing their... Uh, you know, obfuscate their their attempts to try to um, shield the truth, to uh, mislead the, the the public. That he's pointing right to it and saying, "No, it, it's it's there. It's the underlying theory in many of these classrooms, and we're not going to allow it." Right. A lot of material has come down from various websites across the Commonwealth. Um, government websites that house material on critical race theory and critical race theory type concepts. Um, there's still a lot of material that needs to come down from the superintendent, the state superintendent's website on cultural competency and things like that. But um, this is um, a really great start from the governor. I, I'm really excited to see what is going to be uh, happening next. And um, he has uh, uh, really with these executive orders, um, definitely made good on his campaign promises for a busy he day one. He, he, he has, and I give him tremendous credit for that, not backing away from those promises and commitments. And I hope others uh, will follow suit with taking this uh, head on. Meg Kilgannon, always great to talk with you. Thanks, Tony.